Hello, this is Professor Scott Norman, and uh, we are in the Automatic Transmission Lab at Pittsburgh State University, and we are on our third series of videos on AC compressors. So, what AC compressor are we talking about today? Can anybody guess? Anybody know? Well, it's the uh, radio compressor. So, it's called the R4 is, is the name of this, and this is the radio uh, 4 compressor, and so... Uh, this is a, uh, a piston style compressor and um, GM used this <laughs> a lot in the 80s and uh, we don't tend to see this around very much anymore. But um, if you have that mid 80s uh, GM product, maybe a Camaro or something like that, you could have this uh, compressor on your vehicle. Uh, we'll take a look at these compressors and, and the first thing I'm going to do is um, make sure that they spin. So, you know, this one here looks pretty good and at least it, it moves, but uh oh. Oh, okay, so here's something. The pistons move, the hub moves, but that bearing is very tight. Oh my, I can spin it, but it's extremely hard. So that does not pass my test. This guy here uh, is just the opposite. The, um, the pulley is normal. It works out pretty good, but the hub, I can't move at all. So this is a, a bad compressor. This one right here I brought in because if you take a look at it, um, look at the front of that. If you ever see uh, all the paint that is burned off the, uh, the hub of the compressor, you know something got very, very hot. So, um, so that's bad. You know, I see that. I tend to replace the compressor right away. But the hub and the pulley are both locked up solid. Um, my guess on that is that typically when that generates that much heat, uh, the bearings went out. And it kept spinning in and generated a lot of heat on the problem. So how do these uh, R4 compressors work? Well, I do something like this in class and the, and the students are like, what are you doing? Well, you have uh, four cylinders, four pistons, and they are radiating out from a center crankshaft. Or, or better yet, it's not really called a crankshaft, it's called a, um, a scotch yoke is what it is. So, so the input shaft, I tend to call this, you know, the thing that's going to turn when I turn this up, right there, this, this, this input shaft is spinning and it's gonna spin what we call a scotch yoke. And if I turn this, it's kind of hard to, to see, okay, what's gonna happen in here. And students are gonna wanna, wanna take a look at that and they're gonna wanna, wanna, when they get in, take a look at that and kind of watch it. But you got this, this scotch yoke, which is two pieces that are working together and I could take a look at the piston, and I got the head off of one. Aha, right there. And so I can see that piston. And that one piston is moving up. Well, that piston is moving up. This piston right here is moving down. And the pistons kind of walk around each other as it, as it goes up and down. So, so it's kind of an interesting thing. What's interesting about this type of compressor is that the, um, the the intake valve right there is on top of the piston and the exhaust valve is sitting right there which is on top of the head on that and so that's kind of interesting on these on these compressors but a scottish yoke and so you have four pistons one two three four that are all radiating out from a center piece kind of think of it like an old you know think about like a world war one airplane engine where you have that prop where they pull the pull the, uh, the prop in order to start it. You have the engines all radiating out from the center point. So a radio piston, the engine the precipitating piston. And it has a scotch yoke as a mechanism that is uh, driving those. So again, you have two shafts that kind of are doing one of these things, you know, like that, and each piston's on each side. So <laughs> kind of a funny, kind of funny way to de describe that. So, so GM doesn't use these pistons anymore. And so a student was like, well, I guess we don't ever really know about these because uh, we don't see them anymore. Well, depends. We do have, here, I'll do this. I'll try bringing my bench all the way over. So what we have is we have, we, we are seeing on the um, Japanese front, we are seeing some um, compressors that are the Radio 4 style compressors. Um, you can see that you have your four pistons one, two, three, four. I popped uh, the head cover off of one of these. Ah, and when you take a look at it, it looks just like the old GM Radio 4 compressor. You can actually hear it popping. 
It's a piss that moves up and down on that, so it has a scotch yoke in it. This one actually feels pretty good. You know, I'm moving the, the pulley feels good. I don't have any radio play or anything like that on the pulley. It's got my clutch wire there. This one here feels pretty good too. Okay, while we're here, let's check our gap. I got my fewer gauges out. And so what did I say with normal clutch clearance? You might remember that. Gonna be, I'm gonna start out at 20 is where I like to start out at. And so a 20 does not fit in there. Oh, there it goes, right there. So it fits in there kind of tight, but that's good. So I'm looking at right around 20, could be 22, could be 25 as a spec. So typically they give you a spec, could be down as low as you know 18 or something like that, but I would consider that pretty darn good. Let's take a look at this guy right here. How's the, how's the clutch clearance on this if I was fixing it? Oh. So again, you put your finger gauge between the hub which is connected to the input shaft of the scotch yoke and the pulley, which should not be connected. And so again, I try to go around and yeah, that looks pretty good. Again, it's my 20 is kind of tight. I got some slight drag on it, so, so it fits in. So I'm real happy with the clutch clearance on both of those. If my compressor is locked up solid and I have zero clutch clearance, well, I'm not even gonna measure that, that's zero. You know, I have zero clutch clearance at all, so that's, that's terrifying. This guy here, um, I put a 20 in, it's really loose, so let's see if I can put a 30 in, because if it's at a 30, I'm concerned about that being too loose. Put a 30 in there and see what it does. Okay, I can't get a 30 in, so let's try maybe a 20, a 26. Will a 26 work? 24, 26, here we go. Okay, I got a 26 in there. Okay, so that's so that's probably on the high end, the high end of probably what I would ever want to see on that. So it's, I can get it in there. It's probably a little bit less than 26. It could be a 25. And, and this one here, oh, it's solid. <laughs> oh, so that could be my problem right there is that it's, I have zero clutch clearance. So, so before I do anything, I'm gonna need to pull off this hub and I'm gonna need uh, uh, to get my clutch clearance and check my bearing on this um, on this clutch assembly and make sure that this pulley is okay. And that's the R4 compressors. Uh, this is Scott Norman, and if you're looking for more uh, videos on automotive, uh, you can look at my Professor Pintain YouTube channel. I'm also on Facebook, and I have a brand new website. Just look for Professor Pintain. Thank you very much.